Hi, this is Dave Muter. I'm up here in the right-hand corner, and we'll be talking today about tides. I have a picture here of the Smelt Sand State Recreation Site taken last summer. Uh, it's on in Yahats on the Central Oregon coast, and you see this is during a low tide when the water is out. We have a fairly wide beach. It's away from this basaltic rocks that we have in here, and you can see a lot of them. We also can walk down toward the water and maybe look for agates in the gravel on the beach. Other beaches are uh, sandy. But in this case, um, we know that sometimes it's low water, but the same beach, you come back and here the waves are, the water is high, the waves are breaking right on the rocks here in on the um, ridge here of basalt, the hard basalt rock that we have in the Yahats area. And we get waves crashing against the shoreline. So what causes this change in the water level? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So we know, most of you know, it has to do with the sun, moon, and the gravity of, of those. And um, we need to talk today about what, uh, how they vary and all the intricacies or some of the intricacies, I can't cover them all. We know that at certain times you can see these, um, low tides allow you to walk down into the tide pools and see the wonderful organisms, the sea anemones, the crabs, the sea urchins, um, star, sea stars. And if you're lucky, like in the lower right-hand corner, when I found a nudibranch, these small little sea slugs that are uh, so delicate and beautiful. To start off with, we need to talk about gravity because um, gravity is what causes the tides. And it's the gravity of the sun and the moon, especially the moon, which is closer to us. Gravity is a force between two masses. We know that the uh, earth is quite massive and the moon is also large, but it is some distance away. So we can find out the force in, by this equation of how they're attracted to each other by multiplying the two masses together and dividing by the distance apart squared. And that squared is very important because as you go away, the force decreases rapidly. So we can say the bigger the mass, the larger the force, the closer the distance, the larger the force. So the moon, even though it's not nearly as massive as the sun. It's only one, about 1 80th of the uh, mass of the earth is um, uh, more, uh, pulls on the tides, pulls the tides more than the sun, which is super massive, but is such far distance away. So that distance squared really diminishes the force of the sun. We also can talk about the orbit. We know that the moon travels around the earth and the two attract each other. That's that green arrow there showing how they attract each, uh, each other. But the moon is also has a velocity. It is traveling around. Uh, and so that um, momentum of the moon balances out the pull the force of the earth and it continually uh, falls toward the earth, but it moves uh, around instead of falling into the earth. So gravity pulls the moon toward the earth, the motion of the moon, we can call it a centrifugal force balances the pull. Now, the earth is covered with a lot of water. We know the oceans cover about 70% of the planet. If we had no forces except gravity um, of the earth and no other forces, it would settle at sea uh, one height and we'd call that sea level. But 
we have a lot going on. And the main thing that is causing our tides is the moon. So let's look at the moon here. We have the earth up here and the moon. The moon pulls on the water. And because the moon is a little closer to this side, uh, a little closer to the water on the um, side toward the moon, it pulls that out a little bit. So we have a bulge over there. It's not huge, a couple of uh, feet, uh, 10 feet, um, or a few meters. So that's the uh, a bulge is pulled out on one side. We can think about the other side, the water on the other side is not pulled as much as the earth. So it actually could bulge out just because it doesn't, it isn't pulled as much. But I like to think about it as the earth moon system. So they, it, the earth, the moon doesn't rotate around the center of the earth, but rather both bodies rotate around a balance point or the center of mass, which happens to be a, a thousand uh, feet below the surface of um, the earth, uh, uh, below the surface of the earth. So we can think of the system rotating around and the water on the opposite side of the Earth over here from the moon is flung away because it's um, being just like you on a merry-go-round as you're spinning around, feel this force, a centrifugal force away from the rotation, the center of rotation. So therefore, we have two bulges of water on the earth, one toward the moon and one on the other side. Now, the earth rotates underneath the bulges. So we're looking down on the north pole of the earth and we have a high tide on one side uh, and on the other. We'll think about the moon being to your right over, over here somewhere. And, but we in the Pacific Northwest here marked by a star at midnight happened uh, on this day happened to be under a high tide. But six hours later, we have rotated around under the low tide. Another six hours, it's back to the high tide. And then the final uh, by 18 hours, uh, we're at a low and then back to midnight we are back under the high. So therefore, in each 24-hour period, we get two highs and two low tides per day. But notice that there is an asterisk there because we need to factor in another uh, motion, and that's the motion of the moon. The moon is moving around as we're turning or the world is spinning, the moon is also continuing on its path. So when 24 hours later, when we get back to the same position, um, the bulge of the moon has changed. It has been dragged along by the moon that has moved. So we have to go an extra 50 minutes in order to get under the bulge again. That's why the tides repeat every approximately 24 hours and 50 minutes. Let's look at this on our tide tables. This happens to be for Newport, uh, Uquinta Bay tide charts. And we're gonna look at July 10th, 2021. And that has a high tide just after midnight. So uh, the high tide, by six hours later, actually it's almost seven hours, we have a low tide. And then back up to a high tide, then again a low in the late afternoon, and then by midnight or one o'clock of the next day, actually, we have a high tide. So that shows the highs and the lows. Now look that they're not the same height 
the high is not the same as the uh, on both um, high tides. We'll get to that on in a couple slides. Um, but for now, we're going to talk about monthly cycles and what happens when the sun and the moon pull together. Now, remember, I said the sun, even though it's super, super massive, um, is very far away. So it doesn't have as big of effect on the water of the earth. And so, but, but it has about a third, quarter to a third of the pull of, of the moon. So when they're aligned, though, when there's a full moon or a new moon, so they're in the same plane, we have spring tides, extra high tides. And when they're seven days later at 90 degrees to each other, they pull against each other. One's pulling out in one direction, the sun's pulling out in the, another direction. So the moon one way, and they counteract each other. And we then have lower tides and we call those neat tides. So let's look at a day, month, and year cycles of tidal charts. This happens to be for Seattle. Uh, we're going to um, see again that we have this asymmetrical um, highs and lows. And we'll talk again about why that is in the next slide. But let's then look at one month. Oh, first of all, where is the zero? Why is it down here? Oh, there's the higher um, high water and the lower low water. But in a month, uh, oh, the, the zero uh, is because we want to spare the fishermen or other boaters running aground. So we make all the charts and everything so that the zero is the mean lower low tide that lower low water tide, we average that over the whole year and that's how we get our zero. But here in one month, we can see there's a spring tide, a neap tide, a spring tide, and a neap tide. And over the whole year, it varies also. Now, I said that the tides were asymmetric. Uh, one high tide, high tide is bigger than the other higher. And that's because we have the Earth's axis tilted at 23.5 degrees from the plane of the moon's orbit, moon and sun's orbit. So as the Earth spins around, uh, we get us over here and uh, the Pacific Northwest are under a larger high tide one time. And then 12 hours later, 12 hours and 25 minutes later, we're under a lower part of that bulge. So that is why we get the asymmetry. Now, that would be great. And I've been talking just as if there was no continents and this bulge can easily travel around the earth. But we know there are continents. And those continents and the ocean basins make a lot of complexities. So the bulge does not easily just travel around the earth. And this picture um, here is a wonderful uh, diagram of how the tides go up and down. The light brown is when they're high tides, the dark brown when it's low. And we see also some of the areas that are restricted uh, are much lower or much higher than um, and have large tidal ranges. We'll talk about that later. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we can look at the same thing and we see the water going up and down off the coast, um, little ripples here and there. But the big difference is as we are looking at the uh, tidal ranges uh, in the rivers and the estuaries. And so we can see here in the middle of the diagram, the Columbia River 
goes up and down, but the water forcing its way up has a lot of resistance. So it takes some time to get up river. And so it lags behind the rest of the water. And that is true up in Puget Sound and the Salish Sea where the uh, tides are behind the waters offshore. Now, let's last thing we'll talk about is the tidal ranges. There's variations. Think about um, the Bay of Fundy, which is kind of a funnel. And so the water gets forced in and higher and higher as it's forced in and so has extreme tides. Um, of uh, 43 feet average or up to 53 feet or 16 meters, extreme tidal range. Um, in Seattle, we have a, about fifth, uh, 11 feet uh, average, but 15 feet maximum tidal range. And others um, vary. Newport uh, here in the Oregon coast is about nine feet uh, average tidal range, um, but Honolulu, only has two feet. So it just de depends on the topography, the ocean basins, and how the water is funneled or channeled through um, various restrictions. Okay, I hope um, uh, you learned a little bit about the tides. And um, if you have questions or comments, you can send them along to me at dave.mue at gmail.com. And here I always end my presentations with a few sunsets. And this one's over Sandpiper Village, uh, north of Waldport. Beautiful to watch the tides and the waves roll in and the sun setting. So hope to see you uh, again. Thanks for listening.